Hi everyone, my name is Shogo. I came from Japan uh, this June. <coughs> uh, I am a leader of butter in this symposium. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Uh, today, uh, I would like to talk about the triangles of the neck. This is a paper, and this is my first project at uh, SSF. Uh, this rape paper is so long, so I focus on the topic of this, uh, this rape paper. This is a lateral view of the neck. The neck, the neck has many triangles, uh, bounded by several structures. These triangles uh, <coughs> may be useful surgical landmark for all surgeons, especially uh, which deal with uh, neck and uh, head and neck surgery. These triangles are mainly divided into the anterior triangle and the posterior triangle. <coughs> and both triangle, uh, sorry, boundary of both triangles is the sternocoid mastoid muscle is here. These triangles are moreover subdivided into the several triangles. You can see the, these, tri these several triangles in this slide within the red circle here and here. Basically, these triangles exist both sides of the neck, but the only submental triangles is unpaired. Some mental triangles is here. Uh, this is bounded by the uh, both anterior berries of the digastric and the hyoid bone, the center of the neck. The next slide is a posterior view of the neck. The neck also has the suboccipital triangles in the posterior neck. These triangles are well known, um, very famous. But uh, there are several nearly forgotten triangles in the neck. This topic, in the, uh, this topic is the main theme in this presentation. So uh, what is the forgotten triangles? I didn't know forgotten triangles until writing this paper. A forgotten triangles is a lesser and Pirogov's and Beckrath's and Flavio's triangles. These triangles, all these triangles name from these discoverers. First three triangles are included into the submandibular triangles. Submandibular triangles is here. Uh, it is bounded by mandible and the anterior and the posterior berries of the digastric. The flavus triangles is very small triangles within the cauti triangle. Firstly, I'd like to talk about the lesser triangle. Lesser was German surgeon. This is, uh, this is bounded by the hypoglossal nerve, it's here, and the anterior and posterior berries of the digastric. The blue highlight area is uh, Lesser triangles. The floor of these triangles <coughs> is myohyoid muscle and hyoglossus muscle. The, this is a nice landmark to look for the linger artery. Linger artery exists beneath uh, exists beneath the hyo, uh, hyoglossus muscle. Is here. The frequency of these triangles it, uh, was 30 of 34 sites according to the previous literature from Dr. Tufts. Next is uh, Pirogov's triangle. Pirogov was a Russian surgeon. <coughs> this is also a nice landmark to look for the linger artery. This is uh, simply uh, the posterior part of the lessers. Yeah. This green highlight area is uh, Pirogov's triangle. Difference is a difference in lessers is uh, that the anterior border is a myohyoid. <coughs> the frequency of uh, this triangle was 30 of 34 sites, according to the same literature. This is a great picture. <coughs> the left one is uh, before 
uh, removing the mild hyoid. The right one is uh, after removing the mild hyoid. Uh, the both pictures after removing the some mandible glands and some some tissues. And M is a mandible, D is a digastric muscle, uh, and M Y is a mild hyoid. F is a facial artery and the facial vein. The 12 is a hypoglossal nerve. Uh, usually, hypoglossal nerve passes through beneath the mild hyoid and go into the tongue. After, the, after removing the mild hyoid, so you can see the hypoglossal nerve and the hyoglossus muscle clearly. The lingual artery exists uh, in the deep layer under the hypo hyoglossus muscle. Okay. The next is the uh, Beckler triangle. Beckler was a Russian, anat uh, sorry, a French anatomist. This is bounded by the posterior border of the digastric and the hyoglossus muscle and the greater horn of the hyoid bone. This yellow highlight area is, uh, is Beckler's triangle. It, uh, it depends on the attachment of uh, digastric muscle. In this slide, uh, the attachment of the digastric is here. If the attachment of here, posterior part, so it is bent, uh, absent. So if you, if you find this triangle, it always contains the uh, linger artery and the uh, hypoglossal nerve in this triangle. The frequency of this triangle is 28 of 34 sides. The last one is uh, Flavius triangles. Flavius was a French surgeon. Yes, this is a small triangle in deep area and uh, within the cartilage triangle. It is bounded by the hypoglossal nerve, it's here, and the internal jugular vein, IJ, IJV, is here, and common facial vein. This red highlight area is the uh, Flavius triangles. It contains at least one of the branches of the common carotid artery, and sometimes it contains the jugular digastric node. This is also a great picture. The red highlight area is the Flavius triangles, <coughs> and you can see the, this is the some mandible grant, and this is a probably digastric muscle. This is a homohyoid. This is a common carotid artery. This is the internal jugular vein, and the common facial vein is here. And the hypoglossal nerve is here. The frequency of this triangle was 15 of 20 sites. This is an ideal location for identification of the common carotid a common facial vein and the common carotid artery and its branches. Okay, uh, in conclusion, the forgotten triangles are good landmark during the surgery of neck, especially the detection of linear artery and the hypoglossal nerve. The forgotten triangles are mainly dependent on the location of the hypoglossal nerve. But, but neck has many variation, so sometimes these triangles may be missing. But a better understanding of the forgetting triangles may help, help minimize, minimize surgical invasion and make surgery efficient. Okay, it's finished. Thank you for your time. <laughs>